Hello and welcome to the April virtual opening. My name is Missy Dunaway. If you have visited the gallery before, there's a chance we have met. I have been a represented artist and staff member for five years. In that time, I have played many roles, including your host for this month's virtual opening reception as our director, Emma Wilson, is currently in Uganda visiting her daughter. Emma, we hope you're having a great time. This month's featured artists are Anne Trainer doming Sarah Ingraham, Joyce Grosso, and Julia Blake. We'll hear more from them in a moment. First, a few thank yous. Thank you to our artists who continue to inspire us and enrich our lives with their artwork every day. Thank you to our clients and visitors who support the arts in Portland, Maine and help our gallery thrive. This is a special time in Maine as we enter mud season, but underneath that mud, there are crocuses and flowers peeking up out of the ground, letting us know that spring is just around the corner. Much of the artwork in this show beckons spring with depictions of jubilant flowers, hopeful landscapes, and bright colors. That brings me to our first artist, Julia Blake. Julia lived in Boston for many years, but recently relocated to Utah to be closer to her children. However, she will always have deep ties to New England, which are evident in her symbolic paintings. Julia's work chronicles her spiritual journey with a visual vocabulary of symbols, including trees, dahlias, and poppies. This month's exhibition includes several new abstracts that we are very excited about. In her remarks, Julia will explain the depth behind these paintings and how the images relate to uh, recent life changes. Julia came to painting later in life after having six children and approaches the practice with the same love and devotion that she shows her family. Please welcome artist Julia Blake. I'm very happy to be a part of the April show at Portland Art Gallery, and thank you for being here. Um, I want to talk about the pieces that I've been working on, and they are coming from my experiences in life, as usual. Um, this time in particular, I've been processing um, my move away from Boston. So I've included a, a Boston abstract piece that's very meaningful to me, and I, I really miss my time there. I hope to get back soon to the East Coast. Um, but I really enjoy doing abstracts, and I enjoy doing um, geographical pieces like this one. It's been a time of deconstruction for me. A lot of things that have been foundational um, from my past are, are changing, especially with a big move, but other things. And so there are some pieces in this that deal with deconstruction and um, coming back to basics and coming back to the little things that, that matter, the little things that um, give my life meaning. Uh, I have a piece that that's really just got this vibrant emerald green in it that um, to me represents growth. Um, I often paint about the symbolism of spring after a long, hard winter. And the New England winters are as some of the hardest in the country and really anywhere. And so that vibrant green, when it comes out of the ground and you start to see color in the landscape is um, very meaningful to me and um, something that helps me to to hold on during the winter is even just imagining, you know, the, the things that are going to pop up out of the ground in the spring. So that vibrant metallic green is, is something that I haven't worked with much, but um, had a really good time with the textures on that one. Um, another piece is called the straight and narrow, which refers kind of to um, a scripture that I grew up understanding one way. And um, now I understand it a very different way um, as, as I deal with some deconstruction of things and, and I find that um, when we're on a journey, it doesn't really look like what we thought it would be when it started. And what I've experienced is that most of the time, the journey is harder than we think it's going to be. Um, it's not straight, <laughs> but that we, at least for me, I'm finding that the journey is, is more rewarding and more full of um, excitement and joy than I had anticipated, even though it's not what I expect, had expected. So that's a little bit about what straight and narrow talks about um, and means to me. The colors are also meaningful. And of course, I love the looseness. Um, I love to abstract and just be very loose. Um, these pieces all are about new growth because that's to me what's really important in life. If we don't push ourselves out of our comfort zones, if we don't really try to see what's going on to find meaning in, in the trials that we're facing, whether we brought them on ourselves or whether they were 
heaped upon us. Um, we have to find the meaning in them. We have to tell ourselves stories that help us to stay positive, help us to keep moving forward. And so that's a lot of what these pieces have been for me. And um, they, I certainly want them to, to bring joy. I, I paint in, in ways and in colors and in compositions that help me feel more joy because that's ultimately my goal in life is to feel more joy for myself and to give joy to other people as I interact with them. I think the most important part of life is our human interactions and the more whole that we are, the more uh, content we are with ourselves and at peace with ourselves, the better our interactions are with other people. So I've had a really good time. It's kind of a diverse, eclectic group of paintings, which is pretty much what I do is <laughs> pull together different things that maybe are only tied together by color. Um, I am really excited to see people at the show, to be out in Portland again. And I thank you all for coming and for your support of Portland Art Gallery and for making it such a wonderful community. Now I would like to introduce Joyce Grasso. Joyce has been with the Portland Art Gallery for many years. She is currently based in Stamford, Connecticut, but she was raised in Portland and has deep ties to the state of Maine. I have always been a fan of her sweeping landscapes that capture the Maine marshland with lush, energetic brushwork. Joyce taught art to children for many years, and that childlike curiosity and inquisitiveness is evident in her work, which invites viewers to view the world with wonder. Please welcome Joyce Grasso. Hi, my name is Joyce Grasso. I will be showing my artwork for the month of April along with Sarah, Ann, and Julia as a featured artist. I'm looking forward to that. I've been with the gallery for the past seven years and everyone has been very, uh, the other artists are very creative and supportive group. I've enjoyed being with them. I'd like to share a little bit of my background. I grew up in Portland, Maine and uh, upon graduating, I went off to uh, become an art teacher, and one of the only art education programs was in Connecticut. So I became an art teacher at 21 years old, and for, the, uh, for those 35 plus years, I taught it in, uh, mostly at an art magnet school. We worked with all mediums. We did 80 shows, scenery, and I have two master's degrees, one of them being in children's literature. I found that that influenced my artwork along with the children tremendously. Uh, there was a lot of collage that um, was in the books. And I find that my artwork can be a bit collage -y, sometimes opaque, sometimes more rendered. I go back and forth between more uh, representational, more graphic, uh, depending on my mood. Wave and cloud patterns are uh, the main feature in my seascapes. They tend to be collage-like as well. Sometimes my seascapes are uh, very repetitive with the wave patterns and sometimes they're uh, more organic with a more rendered and soft look, as you'll see uh, in some of the pieces behind me. It's quite a combination. After a while, uh, COVID came upon us and I decided to do something new because I missed my family and we weren't having people over for dinner. So I surrounded myself with my own artwork, with my love of family, food, and gardening. These uh, subjects poured out into my new still lifes, which uh, tend to be a little bit more retro, mid-century mid style. The common thread between my two pieces are the exaggerated shapes, the bold color, and the pattern. And uh, as you can see, you'll see that uh, these bold shapes relate to one another, the patterns relate to one another. And as I get to the end, I have more difficulty filling in the patterns because they all have to speak to each other. The common thread between those, uh, my seascapes as well, is a sense of place, memories, 
playfulness and optimism. I'm, uh, I've been through a life saving and a life changing surgery. So uh, the shoreline I find very therapeutic and the optimism of the seascape and the calming of the seascape along with my still lifes are very whimsical and playful. So um, if you were wondering what the connection was between these two kinds of artwork, because both of them will be in my April show, as you'll see, uh, that's the connection. A sense of place included sense of place in the scenery as well as in my still lifes. I'd like to thank uh, the Portland Art Gallery and I hope everybody can make it to the opening on April 4th from five to seven. And if you can't go online or stop by the month of April and see the show. Thank you. Sarah Ingraham joined our gallery in 2021 and is tuning in today from her uh, studio in Brooklyn, New York. So we will hear a bit of the hustle and bustle of the city in the background. When we first met Sarah, we were blown away by her exuberant portrayals of flowers artfully arranged in lush still lives. As Sarah explains in her upcoming remarks, there are many emotions swirling beneath the surface of her signature hot pinks and lime greens. Her paintings are also a rich tapestry of pattern that light up client homes around the country. I know you'll enjoy learning more about Sarah's background in wallpaper design and how it continues to inform her work today. Please welcome Sarah Ingraham. Hi, my name is Sarah Ingraham. Uh, this is gonna be my second show with the Portland Art Gallery. So I just wanna thank them and their staff for all the support. I know putting on a show every month is no small thing. So thank you guys. Um, I just wanna get into my background a little bit. Uh, I went to the University of Vermont. I have a BA in art history and a BA in studio art. I definitely painted, but I did a lot of other things. I was a textile artist, I screen printed, I made sculpture. I think I was a little bit hesitant to be a painter just because historically it's tough and also I didn't know anyone at the time who was making a living from painting. So my goal when I graduated was to do something in the design world, something like textile design, product design, um, functional art. So I ended up working at a wallpaper company in Brooklyn, that was my first job. and we would print on these like 46 foot tables we'd be doing between 10 to 12 impressions and you'd be working in tandem with somebody else and some of these wallpapers would have up to seven colors like it was very physical i think the the creative thing that impacted me uh was just the the color i remember being the color girl they would send me to the back of the studio on fridays and i would make all the ink for the next week i'd be mixing just gallons of paint with pigment and you know following these very precise recipes and you know just color matching and trying <laughs> just it was a hard job you had to you had to have a really good eye and you had to understand color and that definitely affected my work um for the better the other thing was that i noticed people were just buying the craziest designs they would be we'd be making these like neon pink and like bright green and and like sparkly and black like wallpapers and people were living with this and that really opened my mind because at the time I just remember being told that like my colors sometimes were too much or that people weren't going to buy them and it really is not the case there's like there are people out there who are obsessed with color and love boldness and like I think I really had found my people. I, I realized there was a world out there for me. It was, you know, really, really great. I did I did learn that the textile world and design world may not be for me. And the first job I could find was um, to work as an artist assistant for a painter. And, um, you know, that was an interesting job. I remember thinking like, oh no, like I'm back in the painting. <laughs> oh, here we go. Um, but it was cool. I got to learn about how like a painting studio is run and all these question marks that I had were answered. And I realized like, oh, I could probably do this. So I, you know, did. And <laughs> I remember having no income, you know, I had left this job and I, it was spring in New York and I was walking around one of the parks and I had picked a flower. You're not supposed to, but I did. And, you know, brought them home and I decided 
to paint from observation, teach myself how to paint again and, and combine all this knowledge that I had from, from like the color theory. And it, I remember it feeling like an aha moment. Like I, it was instantly something that I knew I would do. And I remember thinking like, oh, like I guess I'm a painter. <laughs> like this is gonna be hard, but it really felt like nothing else. And you know, a couple months later, the pandemic hit and I remember, you know, it was the most perfect incubation period. And by the end of it, I had, you know, made this massive body of work and I was, you know, I'd been picked up by two galleries. It really couldn't have worked out better. Like my career had started. Um, but I, I remember, I remember thinking like the best part about painting, like when I started was the sense of control that it gave me. I remember feeling like, you know, especially like creative people, there's a certain amount of chaos or uncertainty in our lives, or like, you know, at least for me. And the, the painting practice is definitely something that keeps me grounded. I think it's really important. And often I'm arranging objects and colors and creating these compositions while also working through sometimes really difficult emotions. And for me, the really vivid colors are kind of cathartic. There's like an emotional release that happens. And sometimes I worry that people are gonna look at my paintings and just see like a flower in a pink vase, but it's really not that simple. Like they're actually very meditative, they're very sensitive and they're highly emotional. Like hot pink is not always sweet. Like sometimes it's angry and most often in my work it is. Like these are intense emotions with intense colors. And I think you know, if you're in front of my work and you're feeling some kind of agitation or you're maybe feeling some joy or you, you're stuck in front of it and you can't figure out why, I think that means the painting's working and we're communicating. And that's what's so cool about seeing art in person, like something tugs on you. And this work in this show is definitely all about that. I've had some ups and downs this year and the work definitely ranges from frustration to optimism and everything in between. So it'll be interesting to see what you guys pick up on. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited. It's going to be up for all of April. I hope to see you guys there. The opening is April 4th, 5 to 7, so please come. Finally, I would like to introduce Anne Trainer domain Anne is one artist who masterfully captures the main landscape in her renderings of our working waterfront, stunning seaside, and iconic lobstermen. Anne started in graphic design, and you can see many of those elements in her work today and the heartful narratives depicted in her paintings. This month, we are excited to share new large works, the largest to date that she created in a new studio space in New Hampshire. Please welcome April's featured artist, Anne Trainer domain Hi, I'm Anne Trainer domain and I am a featured artist this month at Portland Art Gallery. I've been part of the gallery for several years and have always enjoyed my uh, time with them. And uh, this year should be no different. Uh, for myself, regarding my art, I made a big move last year. My husband and I, we had a house built. Uh, and now I have a much larger studio, which is very different than my previous space, uh, which means there's a lot of different advantages to this space than what I've had in the past. Uh, in the past, I really could only work on one mid to large size piece at a time. And now I can do three, four, possibly even five much larger pieces for me, which means like 40 by 60 inches or three feet by three feet, that kind of thing. So um, this new space has afforded me a lot more flexibility uh, where I can explore doing some larger work that I have wanted to do um, for a number of years. Um, but last year it just, uh, changes that we made made it possible for me to plan out my new studio so that I would have nice lighting, uh, some natural light, some uh, new uh, lighting boxes uh, that are overhead of me, and they uh, don't offer um, any kinds of shadows on the wall like um, track lighting would have in the past. So um, experimenting with these lights and light temperature and natural light here a lot more room to move around in this studio. 
Um, I am still not all the way unpacked and prepared uh, to show everyone <laughs> what my new space looks like, uh, but eventually I'll get there. I'll probably post a little video of what, what things look like in a, in a, um, a more working stage. So in working uh, this year, I wanted to explore a way to work in an unplanned manner. So recently, and for quite a few years, I work in thumbnails and a sketchbook, and I try to plan out an overall design. And that's a holdover from my career in graphic design and uh, planning um, design for advertising and marketing pieces. So I have adopted and kept that um, method of working as a full-time painter. Um, but I, it also can be a handicap too, because sometimes I felt I was leaning on that instead of allowing my own intuition to come out and let things happen as they might on a painting. So this new studio has sort of um, juggled my style of work and uh, kind of threw it all up in the air. And now that it's settling out, I'm getting a little bit more sense of how I am going to work in my upcoming work. The work in this show is sort of a transitional series of paintings. Um, I called it a new studio and a new light. And I have been uh, using and working in ways previously that functioned for me and also introduced some new ways of working. And that's what some of the pieces uh, that I've been working on earlier this year might not be evident to you as a viewer, but me as the artist, I can feel as like, oh, I remember that. I, I remember I had to go and find this kind of a tool because I needed it to be much larger or mixing paint. I needed an area or buckets that actually I could mix up larger amounts of paint. So it's been uh, quite an experimental period of time for me, um, just getting used to working in my new studio. Uh, and I do hope that you've enjoyed the um, the new work as it's come out. I've experimented with some stamping, um, certainly painting again on some of my older pieces, but the canvas is really nice. It's got great texture on it. So I'll begin a painting on top of that. And you'll see uh, a couple of those at least in this uh, show as well. So I hope you uh, enjoy taking a look at what I've done. And I truly appreciate uh, everything that Portland Art Gallery does for me uh, as far as giving me a platform to show my work. Thank you very much. Thank you for joining us for April's virtual opening. Please visit us if you are in Portland, Maine at 154 Middle Street in the historic Old Port. We are open every day from 5 to 7 p.m. You can also reach us 24 hours a day, seven days a week online at portlandartgallery.com. Our gallery associates are standing by waiting to assist you. You can also follow us online on Instagram and our YouTube channel. And finally, Portland Art Gallery is a proud sponsor of the Radio Maine podcast with Dr. Lisa Belisle, where Lisa interviews notable Maine residents who will give you fresh perspectives on our beloved state. Thank you very much for joining us, and we hope to see you next month.